And as we leave tonight, my colleague Noakib Kimboi sat down with the philanthropist Manu Chandaria, who told him, among other things, that philanthropy runs in the heart and should also be passed from generation to generation. Enjoy that interview. My name is Brenda Zedaradito. Good night. What I'm holding here is a medal. And this medal, out of the billions of people, only 65 or so people have this medal. I'm talking about the Andrew Carnegie Medal of Philanthropy. And right here in Kenya, we have our very own Dr. Manu Chandaria, who received this wonderful medal uh, for the year 2022. Normally, they are issued after every two years. And uh, Dr. Manu, we, we're going to talk about philanthropy. But for starters, I know you are retired. You retired three years ago. You're 93. So for a lot of people retiring at 90 does not make sense. How is retirement life for you so far? Well, retirement life is good. Um, it takes a lot of courage not to get involved in the business because that's what I've done for 70 years. So out of my 93, 70 is business. And so it's always possible that one can you go. Now you must have some discipline if you want to retire and make sure that you, your time is used for something more meaningful besides your own self and your own family's safe. Uh, philanthropy, the work of Chandaria Foundation, touches lots of people and people who need the help. So it's an interesting idea, interesting thought, and I'm enjoying it. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm glad you are enjoying it. Absolutely. You're finding joy in it. Uh, yes, it's sure, because it's, it, it gives me a much more time to look at the pain that people go through in this country. Uh, in the other one, I'll just spend a few minutes or a few hours a day. But now, it's a full concentration on it. Wow. Right now, there's a full shortage. So, full concentration where? and how we can help. I mean, when you talk about philanthropy, is it a principle that is born out of excesses? Are you born into philanthropy? Or do you become philanthropic? What are the foundations? Uh, well, I was born uh, as a Jain. And the f fundamental ideology of Jainism is to give, to support, to help. And uh, that also helped, in, in, though I'm not a strict Jain. But you know, that's the ideology and philosophy that I grew with, that my parents, having nothing at the time, but still will continue to keep on giving to other people. So I think religion has a, a tremendous force on it. But at the same time, uh, it was my education in the United States when I went over there and I was exposed to, you know, big givers, Rockefellers, Vanderbilt, uh, Carnegie, a number of them. And so much money is being put into institutions. And so that came into my head, but when I came back, I, I felt that my size is so little. When I talk about Rockefeller, and we talk about those Vanderbilt and Carnegie's and others, they're huge. Well, when I came back, I started with 40 people working in one of my plants in Mombasa. And that was one principal business my family had because we had lost everything else during the war. So there's only one plant, 40 people, and six members of the family on top. And when you go home, the 36 members. Now, how do you think is your first priorities of what? Is to, is to grow, to be someone. But then, from 40, when we became 100, I, I asked my, we four of us were young people, came to our parents and asked, listen, how about setting up Chandaria Foundation? 
And he looked at us. I said, something wrong with you? I said, what's wrong with me? He said, you know, you lived too long in the United States. I said, Papa, I've lived only three years in the United States. And then he said, yeah, but you know, we're not Rockefeller. We're not Ford. There's a big hole over here. 36 members of the family. First, get on with the work. Then think about philanthropy. Well, so I told him that, look, the idea is very simple. When we don't have the wealth, let's think about this. When you create wealth and then you want to do it, most of the people don't want to do it then. Because the wealth is such, gets so stuck, they don't want to do it. So it's to do something which you don't have anything at that time. He said, not come, get to work. And the matter was closed. After f- four years, when we became 400 people from 40, he came back and he said, I like the idea. The day you had raised it, we didn't have the capacity. Now we have got the capacity. He has 10% of the shares of the company for Chandaria Foundation, and we set it up. It was started with one scholarship. But over the period of time that you can see that it has created and more and more people are thinking, why not to give? And yet it has not deeply gone in to lots of people who has got the money. But the idea is that if you can see them and if you can realize that why there is a need that the money you're not going to take. You come with nothing, you go with nothing. Okay. So how best you can use it? And I thought, we thought that Chandaria Foundation was a good venue. Yes. And that's why you see lots of names of Chandaria Foundation on institutions. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for, I'd like us to go a little bit back. Yeah. Um, your father. For a moment, it was, we don't have the capacity. Yes. Then four years down the line, he comes back to you and he tells you, now we have the capacity. Uh, talk to me. Was that one of the turning points? And from there on, how do you remember your father handling and engagement with the Chandaria Foundation? Uh, you know, he, he, was a, he was much more Jane than me. And he knew that helping others is, is a part of life. And if you want to be somewhere, then you've got to continue doing that. And so the best thing that happened to me was that he had that idea of giving. Even in his own way, he was giving, but it was a small way, not organized way. When I put this idea to him, he said, hey, you're too small. You don't know, you're just 100 people. What are you talking about? But when it became 400, he knew that, yes, this is a right way of turning the family's wealth into some good work. Yeah. And from there on, you see that um, the impact of giving to the society. You just spoke about, you know, post-war, uh, Second World War and the way business was not doing very well, sort of a recovery phase. And now coming, you know, a hundred years or so down the line, we are facing similar situation with the COVID pandemic, very life-changing situations. And yes. But you know, the point was first is to create wealth. Uh, And to create wealth from nothing. My father came here with nothing in his pocket. He created a small business. When we came in, we got that 40 people and one shop over here, which was selling wholesale provision. That's all. We'd lost everything else. So uh, to, to think in a terms requires a vision. And the vision was that, and, and I explained to him, 
in case we make wealth. If we don't create wealth, there is no question. But in case we create wealth, then let's do it now when we don't have the wealth. And this principle of giving also came to us because of during my university time in Mumbai, I was greatly influenced by Mahatma Gandhi. And I always wondered, this man was a powerful lawyer, uh, going to England, done his ministry. And how in the hell, why would he just put half dhoti, go around the country to do what? That hit us that you got to sacrifice. And unless you sacrifice, you cannot achieve. It's not possible. And so it really dawned on us that no, there's no way. We got to jump in it, water, to see whether it's deep enough or not. Understand the pain of people. And there are two ways of doing it. We're writing a check, give it to somebody. I said, oh, uh, Mr. Manu Chandaria gave, or Chandaria Foundation gave money. No, we wanted to get involved. And in every organization that we have given money, we are involved in it. We wanted to see where the problems are. We wanted to talk to them to understand it. Whether it's Kenyatta University, whether it's Nairobi Hospital, whether it's Gertrude, we were great involved ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important part of not writing a check, but understanding where the money is going yes. and why the money is going. Wow. What does that do to you as a person inside Mani Chandaria after all these years of giving? How has that changed you? Well, I, I think that it's a, it's a, the reflection is that people look at me as a giver, no question asked. They look at me and they feel as a decent man, nice man. I, I don't expect them to tell me on my face, but they all think I, I'm a, as a nice man. But the question is that, was it because of what other things? No. It was what we thought was our duty and our responsibility to go to the society and help where help is necessary. That's the reason. Not somebody telling me, oh, wonderful. That's okay. Anybody will tell that. But to go and touch the pain, that is where the problem is. And we thought that we didn't care about what others say. They always speak nice of us, nice. But that is not the satisfaction. The satisfaction is to remove that pain, help others. That's what is important. Yeah. And, and it's something quite interesting. When you, when you were presented with the medal, uh, you placed it on somebody else. Yes, yes. Well, let me tell you a story about this one. Uh, when I got the letter, I found them to Carnegie organization. I said, are you sure that this letter is for me? He said, yes. Your name? Your name Manu Chandari? I said, yes. You live in Kenya? Yes. You run Chandari Foundation? Yes. I said, it's for you. And I asked him, I said, listen, there's South Africa, there's Nigeria, there's Egypt. How come you selected East Africa? He said, look, we do our work very carefully. We've researched for two years. And every time when we talked about it, your name kept on coming. And that's why we gave you. And that's why we honored you with this medal. So, I was very surprised because when you see the names of the people who have received it, 
I, I, I felt that I'm one of the half leg of a milliped. Milliped has got a thousand legs to walk. I am just a half a... How can I be in the league of people who are so huge? But that also proved that's not always the money. It's your involvement. It's the work that you've done. It's the people's approach and the people's liking for you. That's also important. Yes. And so when I got the medal, I, just, I, I was very surprised. I was just, but then I, we went to the United States and I was the first one to receive the medal. And with me was the Dolly Parton, another huge name, Miss Hill, and then Schusselman. And uh, there's no comparison with me with them. Dolly Parton has done 4,000 libraries built in schools. There's no comparison. So when, when I went over there and when I was the first one and they put on their medal on me, it was a it was standing ovation. I was humbled. The minute then I took it out and put it on my great granddaughter, my fourth generation, the people again got up and clapped. And that became the one of the most interesting part of my speech. That this is what we are thinking about philanthropy if you move from one generation to the second, to the third, to the fourth. And she's only three and a half years old. She doesn't know what medal is all about. But when she grows up, grows up, she will know what medal was for. Because this is not ordinary medal. Out of seven billion people, only 65 has got it. So, I think that the whole ideology is that we wanted, we wanted the uh, continuation of philanthropy, not ending with me, but going around to the, up to the fourth generation. Yes. And this was a very novel. Yes, the Rockefeller Foundation is going after Rockefeller is gone, and it's continuous. Unless and until you've got that ideology that I want Chandaria Foundation to continue, to do good work, mm -hmm. to help where the help is necessary, it'll continue from one to another to another. And I think that, that and in my speech also, I said that all of us, 99% of us, Live, keep our hand like this. To take, to receive. Only a few put their hand like this to give. Not all, very few. So this is the difference between receiver and giver. And the giver are very few. And this was a celebration for giving and giving in and, and with no comparison with the people that you see the list over here, the Rockefellers and Bill Gates and, uh, and Aga Khan and uh, Cadbury family and Hewlett family and huge. And it brings the question because for 70 years you've worked yes. really hard. And looking at the principle of giving, being foundational to who you are, I'm seeing it sort of becoming also a critical pillar that our corporate world, our business world, has to be conscious and, and be very present about thinking about giving. What, does, what principles can the corporate world borrow from the philanthropy world? Well, you know, the point is that in, uh, at least in Asians, we believe in that if the right hand is giving, the left hand should not know. But I didn't believe in that. 
I believed to expose, put the names. Many, many people keep on telling me, oh my God, you love your name, isn't it? But the purpose was, if somebody looks at it, does it touch his head? Does it touch his heart? Not head, heart. Does he feel something about it? Does he think that I should do something about it? And that was the purpose when they see Chandaria's accident and emergency center in Nairobi hospital, in Pandya hospital. They see Chandaria medical center in, in Gertrude. They see Chandaria cancer center in Moirafel hospital. What do they think? The purpose was only purely to excite the others, give. And it, it, it was calculated in the sense that normally I would not like to see my name coming up. But unless we expose ourselves and tell them, and they would like to follow. So you, can be done. you inspire. Inspire. Instead of people to look at Chandaria and think, okay, that is Chandaria. Also, I can strive to do yeah. what Chandaria is doing, yeah. essentially. Yeah. And, I mean, you, you've been in retirement for three years. You, you told me here that, I, you know, business talk, uh, yeah, no, no, you no. place it aside. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't even know what companies are doing, how, things, how they are doing. I have no idea no, and no interest because I had to cut off completely and only concentrate now on giving. Was it hard to cut off completely? Yeah, yeah, not easy, not easy, but strong discipline. If you don't, then you will be putting your, keep your half foot over there, half foot of this. I don't retire. Now I'm retired, uh, I have full day for me to think, to act the way I want. There's no set time that 9.30 I have to leave and go to the office, nothing. But it gives me a, a more time to think and worry about our country, yes. worry about the people who cannot help themselves. Yes. And, um, and, and at the, at, at the age is also get catching up. In four months' time, I'll be 94. But as long as my body is working, as long as this is working, I'm okay. In, in, because our conversation, you can sum it up your whole life. You've put your mind to something meaningful, you know, its contribution, and you work towards it. And it seems like it's, when you sum it all up, it's you have been following your purpose. And that's one thing that a, a lot of people are really struggling, asking themselves, what is my purpose in life? The purpose in life is to be useful to others. Purpose in life is to see the downtrodden. Can you improve? I can be happy. And like me, there are so many in this Potaika living. Who doesn't mind? They're just enjoying their life. But I'm enjoying my life with a purpose. And the purpose is purely that I believe in it, that I need to serve the community, I'm serving the community. Wow. Now, in this, this street you go, there are billionaires living on the streets. And if it cannot be utilized, they don't know that they will all go with nothing. They came with nothing, they'll go with nothing. What is the impact that you're creating then? During your lifetime and everything that you do, you must put effort to create an impact. In business, I've created impact. In, in, in organizations, I've created an impact. In philanthropy, I'm creating an impact. Uh, nothing for me, because I, when I go, I'll go empty handed. But people will remember. Uh, so that's the only way that you can set, set examples. examples. Oh. And in fact, you've started the, the discussion about going, 
we came with nothing. You build something and when you go, you leave. But what impact have you had? And looking at what you've done, your resume is very long in what you've done in business, in what you've done in philanthropy world. How would you love to be remembered? Well, the, the point is that I was very surprised when Queen decided to give me OBE. Now, I have no connection with Queen. I have no connection with England. But I'm a British citizen. At that time, I was a British citizen. Now I'm a Kenyan. And they found a person good enough to give an OBE. The same thing, the Indian government gave me the first Pravasi Bhartiya Divas Award. Uh, all right, I know India well enough, but why would they select me? And why, do, why, why did they select me? And I asked them, why? The point is this, that there are people in the world who, who understand what is good and would like to honor the people who do it, who do good. And I think this is nothing but, there's no money involved in this. This piece of metal, but when you wear it, it's only 65 people of the 7 billion people who can wear it. It's, it's a huge recognition of your work. So you feel, at that time you feel, thank somebody's recognizing the work that we do. The people who receive, they always understand. But the third party, to whom we have no connection, uh, what connection I've got with the United States? Nothing. I studied in 1948, some 70 years back. I have no other connection with them. So, when it's all said and done, how would you love to be remembered? Well, to be remembered that we have a lot, of, lot to do to help our society. I should be remembered, yes, there was a man who did so much during his lifetime. Whether it's business, whether it's employment, whether it's the work for the organizations which are supporting the businesses or in philanthropy. Here's with the man. But nowhere there is Manu Chandarya. So people will remember that yes. But the question is that, is that what you want? No, I don't want that only. I want somebody also to come up and follow that path. That's how the MP Shah hospital was built. That's how the schools are built. Every, every in your town, in your village, there'll be a school built which is on Harambe. It's all giving. It doesn't mean that it has to be uh, in the Kenyatta University. Yes. The point is that as long as people are willing to hold each other's hand and try to remove the pain, and improve the society, improve, then I think it's a, it's a noble work. I would say it's a noble job, a noble life that you lived. Wow. Living beyond yourself, making sure that um, what you do does not stop with you. No. But it goes generations down generations. And I'm glad that once you are given this, you placed it on your three and a half year old great granddaughter. Exactly. One day she'll remember my great granddad actually did something and I have I have a duty to continue that. Not only my granddaughter, but that all those people were sitting and looking at it. Mm -hmm. Seeing that this man is transferring the ideology from one to another to another to another to the, to the girl who doesn't even understand what philanthropy is. 
But when she grows up, and then she will look at her photograph with that, and she'll say, oh my God, only few people have got in the world. She starts understanding the responsibility of life. Yeah. What a conversation. Is it okay, Shah? Yeah. If I, once again, I know this has been done yeah. before, but it just feels good to... Sure, sure. sure. On your neck. Thank you, thank you so much. And I can see there. Thank you, sir. Good, thank Beautiful you. conversation. Bye. Bye. All right, lovely. There you have it. Philanthropy is a lifestyle. It's a change of heart. It's small. Live beyond yourself. Do something. Not for yourself, but for others. That's why we have people in the world. Let us impact each other like Dr. Mani Chandaria is doing. You too can do it. Start now. I'm Noel Kipkin Boy. Enjoy the rest of your viewing.